What's up guys, it's your favorite cue coach. Welcome to part two of Queen Neiman's professional golf swing analysis. This part we're gonna be talking about is golf swing. Let's go do this thing. So welcome back to the channel guys. If you guys are new to Kiwi Golf Japan, we do a bunch of videos like this every single week. So what you gotta go do is hit that little red subscribe button, smash the like button, leave a comment, share the video, it really does help. Let's hop into the first part where we analyze his golf swing. All right, guys, so the first part of this video, we're going to be taking a look at his iron game. Now, if we remember the strokes game, we can remember that he was a really talented approach player, right? I think he was in terms of approach play uh, right around 23rd place for strokes gained. Now, there's definitely some stats with proximities that he's really talented in as well, right? From 200 to 225 yards, he was ranked third on the PGA Tour. I forget how many feet he was proximity to the hole, but that's something that you see a lot of the greats you like Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods. Very, very talented long iron players. And the reason why you need to be talented is because a lot of the par threes on the TGA Tour are going to be 200 yards plus, right? So what we tend to see with strokes gain is players get a lot of their gains on par threes and they get a lot of their gains on par fives, right? So that's where they're picking up a lot of their strokes relative to the field. So for a player to be able to be that talented at that level from 200 to 225 yards is a very, very good sign, right? So... Keeping that in mind, it's going to be interesting to take a look at his golf swing and see what he currently does. Now, what we're going to do with this analysis is we're going to kind of show you what he's doing in his golf swing in this particular shot. He It looks like he's trying to hit a fade, and we'll kind of get into kind of the little minor details here in a second. But then once we get past kind of what he's trying to do currently with this shot, what, what his swing kind of looks like, we'll talk about how it kind of deviates from my particular model of swing that I prefer. But... That being said, it's also going to lead into the next conversation, which is more so matchups, which is really popular here in Japan now. Um, not so much popular in America anymore. was very popular maybe about two years ago when George Gankus was really kind of pushing it. But we're going to talk about the concept of matchups and how really, even though it might not fit my preference as a coach, if I was coaching him, would we actually change his golf swing, which is definitely debatable and it kind of brings up a really interesting conversation of maybe longevity of a career of a tour player and kind of maybe the swing change, instead of thinking it about as like a, like a one-year swing change, you might think about a swing change being spanning over 10 years and you're just doing small little changes every year. Because again, I think, um, anyways, we'll get into that. I don't want to go too much into that right now, but we'll get into that. So let's start out with um, basically what shot he's trying to play here and let's talk about a little bit about ball flight loss. All right, guys, so if we kind of see what Neiman's setting up to do, if we take a look at his heel line, his heel line's pointing somewhere over there. Um, obviously, this video, it, it's already he's already kind of taken it back a little bit in this video. I can't actually move this back further, so we can't see where the club face was pointing. But let's make a quick little guess. I would guarantee he was probably aiming somewhere right around here. So again, the face angle at setup was probably pointing a little bit right of the heel line, which is pretty typical with players when they're trying to hit a cut. And let me kind of explain the reason why. So when you're trying to play a cut, with the advent of ball flight laws, what we kind of learned the basics of was this thing called face angle and club path and really face to path. It's really kind of how you understand how to hit the ball with different curvatures. Now with this player, what he's probably trying to do is, if we said, let's say, um, let me draw a little red line here. Let's say that this is the target line, right? So we're going to say that he's aiming somewhere right around there. Let's just say for um, for fun, because I know he's trying to hit a cut here, let's just say he's trying to get his club path right around negative four, right? So this little yellow line right here is going to be the club path. And then the face angle, which is kind of where the face is pointing at impact, is going to be right around, somewhere right around here, right? Because again, if you know ball flight laws, you want to have the blue, which is the face angle, pointing to the right of the club path. Now, if you don't want to overcut the ball or start the ball right at the target line and then cut it, you want to have the relationship that we have here. Not to say that the relationship Neiman's currently doing is how everyone hits a cut. Like there's some guys like Zach Johnson that actually hit a cut with an end to out path and they just have their face right of it. That might be a little bit more advanced for you guys and we probably would have to do more videos about ball flight laws for you guys to grasp that concept. But just for now, let's kind of understand the basics. He's swinging a little bit left of the target line where the club face is pointing. Face is pointing a little bit left of the target line, but right of the club path. And what we're going to see here is when he makes this swing, we're going to see a golf ball that starts pretty much right at the just left side of that tower. And then most likely cuts back somewhere around the pin, right? Looks like the greens also sloped a little bit left or right. So in terms of him hitting a little fade here, I think that would be the correct shot for this pin. 
Now, that being said, do I think Neiman hits a fade all the time? I really don't know because I don't watch this player a lot, but I have another video of him hitting a driver, which we're going to analyze maybe in the next video. This is going to be a three-part series, and he d does look like he's hitting a draw in that video. So my guess is that Neiman plays both shots. He hits draws and he hits fades, which is pretty common with a lot of tour players. But in this particular shot, that's kind of what he's doing. So now that we know kind of what he's doing, he's hitting a fade, let's talk about kind of his golf swing um, and how his golf swing in this particular swing really sets him up for a fade. And then we'll get into the cons, uh, the conversation of why I might not prefer the swing. So taking a look at Neiman, if we take him up to the top of the swing, the first thing that you're going to see, which is pretty um, common for someone who's trying to hit a fade, is we're going to take a look at his hand positioning at the top kind of relative to where his head is. So this just is really something called hand def or arm def. Fancy way of just saying, are your hands close to your head at the top of the swing? Or are they further away, right? Maybe uh, is he more Bubba Watson or Justin Thomas? Or is he more of a Matt Kuchar or someone who's a little bit more on the flatter side? Obviously he has hand positioning that's a little bit more closer to his head, more so on the Bubba side. So how is this gonna help him hit a fade? Well, if you wanna shift path to the left of the target line, to me, it makes a lot of sense to have a hand position that's a little bit more this way as opposed to this way. Because again, it's a lot easier to get the hands working out and across, which is what you want to do when you want to have a negative path to the left of the target line. So that, for him, is a good checkpoint right there. Now, taking a look at something else, which is kind of his hip line. So hip line is typically measured against the target line. So if his target line is over here, what you would be doing, and it's hard to see in a 2D world, especially when the camera angle is not the best, you would kind of measure his hip line something like that. Again, it's a 2D world, so this <laughs> this isn't the best representation. But if we had him on gears or some type of 3D system, they would be measuring it relative to kind of the target line where that club face is pointing at setup. And let's just say that most standard players, let's just say a neutral pattern is going to be around 45 degrees open or kind of pointed, um, let, me, let me do this real quick, kind of 45 degrees this way would be kind of the hip line. I would say he's a little bit underneath that. He might be somewhere right around 35 to kind of 25 degrees at this uh, this particular swing, which if we think about it, is probably a good thing if he's trying to play a fade, right? Because if you want to play a fade and you get a lot of hip turn and you really op uh, open up these hips on the backswing, it's going to be hard to get that path left. You're really going to have to open up fast and quick, right? And that might be tough to do, especially when you're trying to have an iron shot that you're going for precision, for distance control, as well as shot shape. You don't want to have a whole lot of movement on the way down. It's it's just going to be tough, guys. Trust me. So th this is probably what he's doing. If he's trying to hit a cut, you probably see a pattern where he doesn't turn the hips as much in the backswing. Arms get a little bit closer to the head. And this is going to make it pretty easy for him, I think, to shift that path to the left. Now, if we take him down, we can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Hands are kind of pretty far in front. Uh, middle of the hands are right in line with the sternum. You can see the hips are opening up really, really quick, which, again, remember, is not our preference. But in terms of shifting path left, it could definitely help out. And then as he starts coming into the golf ball, we can see a nice little strike here. Golf ball starts pretty much just left like we said. Swing direction looks left. Club path, I would guarantee, is left. And it looks like he hits a nice little beautiful cut, right? So in terms of his golf swing, that's pretty much what he does in this particular swing. And the reason why I say it this way, I don't say that this is his golf swing, because again... PGA Tour players, for the most part, they're always hitting different styles of shots, so it's really hard to kind of show, oh, this is their stock swing. And that's why I say for students, if you're beginner golfers, it's good to have a stock swing, right? Because we don't want to complicate it too much for you guys. Just have something simple to do to where you can repeat it out on the course. When you get more advanced and you want to start shooting lower, you need to have multiple swings, right? You can't just be hitting one shot and play high-level golf consistently. All these players out here are playing different styles of shots. Now, some might play more uh, different styles of shots than others, right? Some people like maybe, uh, let's say I know Bubba predominantly, um, well, Bubba's not the best example. Bubba probably plays a, a large variety of shots, but let's take a player maybe um, who's, oh, like a Zach Johnson, let's say. Zach Johnson typically hits a draw, but he also would be playing other shots as well, right? So if you're a good player, it's something you got to think about. You got to be able to play multiple shots, different trajectories, different spin rates, different curvatures, etc. Right. So, and that's what this player is currently doing here. Now, in terms of what um, my preference. Now, if I were his coach, again, you guys know I don't like the whole over rotation thing. I don't like the hips opening up so quick. But if I have a player that's probably ranked in the top like 25 on the PGA Tour with their approach play, 
Is it something I'm gonna change right off the bat? Probably not, and it might not be something I change ever. Now, I will tell you why I would maybe wanna change this here, and let's kinda of get into that discussion. Now, in terms of kind of longevity of a player's career, one of the major kind of things that you see with injuries of players is usually the lumbar spine, the lower back, is tend to be kind of the one injury that really kind of puts a player out of their out of their playing career. And if you kind of see um, Neiman here, he has a very uh, very Trevino esque type of impact position as well as kind of follow through. He really kind of stays in that right side lateral bend. If anything, he almost starts increasing it through the shot. Now, I think that in terms of uh, approach play, I think it's actually a great move. And I think that it's actually something that could really cause maybe a stable rate of closure, not really a, a massive um, toe flip through the shot. I really think that this might be one of the keys for him being such a consistent iron player. But in terms of longevity, in terms of like keeping the back healthy, is he going to be able to support that for throughout the you know the entirety of his career, depending on how long it's going to be, right? Because he's 21. So being his coach, if I were his coach, you got to talk about how long do you expect to be on the PGA Tour? What level do you want to get to? You know, how many years you want to play? All that stuff will factor in. But really, if I if he said that he wanted to have a very long career, maybe like a 15, 20 plus year career, it might be something that you want to start slowly getting rid of, right? As he starts getting older, it wouldn't be something we would touch probably within the first six to seven years unless he started showing signs of lumbar issues. It'd probably be something after those first seven years, we might start slowly tweaking as he starts losing mobility and flexibility as he gets older. Definitely might be something that we would start fixing. But in terms of matchups, I think he's doing an excellent job. So he matched up his golf swing for the shot that he was trying to play here. He was trying to play a little low cut, or maybe not a low cut, but he's definitely trying to play a cut. And I think that he he has a pretty good, damn good golf swing, and you can't argue with his stats as well. So keeping that in mind, that's going to be the Iron Swing video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I think it's really interesting taking a look at players like this who have maybe swings that don't quite fit my preference, but still are having really good results. I think it's just a testament of kind of the knowledge of ball flight laws and how you how you can control face to path with different types of swings and how there's a bunch of different ways to get it done, right? So again, you can always have your preference, right? I have my preference. There's a bunch of other teachers that have their preference. There's a bunch of players that have their preference. But at the end of the day, if you're controlling your low point, which is the bottom of the swing, your face to path, your D plane, you're going to be a great golfer, right? And obviously, Neiman can do this very, very well. So big round of applause to him. Really love his iron swing. I'm looking forward to checking out his driver swing as well. Leave a comment, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share the video, and I'll see you guys again next time.